Hello everyone! Pag-usapan natin ang asymptotes of rational functions. Given tong curve natin na nandito, ang asymptote niya is a line, or in this case, we have two lines, yung ating red na dotted line, tsaka yung ating green na dotted line na nandito, such that the distance between the curve and the line approaches zero. Ibig sabihin, kapag tinignan natin tong part na to, palapit ng palapit yung curve natin dun sa ating line, pero hindi sila magdidikit. The distance approaches zero pero they do not intersect. Same here dito sa baba natin, palapit ng palapit yung curve pero hindi siya tatama dito sa green dotted line. And as the curve extend towards infinity. Kahit itodo pa natin ang extension dito sa taas at sa baba, hindi pa rin talaga siya tatama. Nagpakita tayo ng dalawang type ng asymptote dito. Una, etong green dotted line na nasa baba. This is a horizontal asymptote. Simply because the orientation ng ating line is horizontal or pahiga. And then our second one, we have our vertical asymptote, this red dotted line. Sinusundan pa rin niya yung definition ng isang asymptote and it is oriented vertically or patayo. Now that you are familiar sa itsura at properties ng asymptotes, now let us discuss kung paano natin makukuha ang asymptotes ng isang rational function. Let's start with our horizontal asymptote. Ito yung pahiga. Madali lang naman kunin yung ating horizontal asymptote. Titignan lang natin yung degree ng ating numerator, which is a polynomial, tsaka yung degree ng ating denominator na polynomial din. For our first case, kapag yung degree ng numerator ay mas mababa dun sa degree ng denominator, then automatic ang ating horizontal asymptote SY is equal to zero or yung line ay nasa x-axis. With this, ang kailangan natin i-clarify ay kung ano ba tong degree na nandito. Ang degree is the highest exponent ng ating x sa isang polynomial. Halimbawa, kapag tinignan natin yung ating numerator na 5x plus 3, we have our x here, ang exponent niya lang ay 1. Wala na namang x si 3, kaya we have our highest exponent of 1, eto yung ating degree. Kaya our numerator 5x plus 3, it has a degree that is equal to 1. Then dito naman sa ating denominator na x squared minus 2x plus 1, kung titignan natin yung ating x, ang pinakamataas na exponent natin ay 2. Kasi this is just raised to 1, tapos wala tayong x dito. Dahil siya yung pinakamataas, then we can say that our degree for our denominator is equal to 2. Then as we observe, ang degree ng ating numerator is just 1, tapos ang denominator natin ay 2. Since mas mababa yung degree ng ating numerator compared sa denominator, 1 is less than 2, then our horizontal asymptote is simply y is equal to 0. Ito na siya. Then let us proceed with our second case. We have our number 2. What if yung degree ng ating numerator ay mas mataas naman dun sa degree ng ating denominator? Same given, pinagpalit lang natin yung ating numerator at denominator. We have x squared minus 2x plus 1. Ang pinakamataas na exponent ng x dun sa ating polynomial is 2. So for our numerator, its degree, this is just equal to 2. And then for our denominator, this is just 5x raised to 1. Siya na yung pinakamataas, kaya we have our degree that is just equal to 1. Since mas mataas yung 2 compared kay 1, Then for this case, masasabi natin na there is no horizontal asymptote. That is for our second case. And lastly, yung ating pangatlo, what if yung degree ng ating numerator ay pareho na dun sa degree ng ating denominator? Then our horizontal asymptote y, this is just equal to a sub n over a sub d where yung ating a sub n, siya yung coefficient or yung number na kasama nung pinakamataas na exponent ng ating x. In this case, we have our x squared. Siya yung pinakamataas dito sa ating numerator. Kaya ang ating a sub n, this is just simply equal to 5. So let me write that down. We have our y is equal to, ang a sub n natin ay 5. Then this is over. Yung a sub d naman natin, siya yung numerical coefficient naman na kasama nung pinakamataas na exponent ni x dito sa ating denominator. So, we have our x squared. Siya yung pinakamataas dito. And then, we can write this down as 1 x squared. Kaya, ang a sub d natin, yung numerical coefficient ng ating x squared is just equal to 
so we put 1 here. And then we simplify y is equal to 5 divided by 1, that is just equal to 5. This is our horizontal asymptote. As a recall, kapag yung degree ng ating numerator ay mas mababa sa degree ng ating denominator, then automatic ang ating horizontal asymptote, y is just equal to 0. Pero for our case 2, kapag yung degree ng ating numerator ay mas mataas dun sa degree ng ating denominator, then automatic then no horizontal asymptote. Then lastly, kapag pareho yung degree ng ating numerator at denominator, as we can observe here, pareho silang phase 2, 2. Then kukunin natin yung numerical coefficient ng numerator. In this case, you have 5. Tapos, i-divide natin dun sa numerical coefficient nung leading term ng ating denominator, we have 1. Kaya 5 divided by 1, kaya tayo nakarating dito sa sagot natin. So that's it for our horizontal asymptote. Let us proceed dun sa ating pangalawa, which is our vertical asymptote. We have to solve for them, eto yung proseso natin. For vertical asymptote, meron tayong tatlong steps. Una, kailangan muna natin isimplify yung numerator at yung denominator by getting their factors. And that is if applicable. Kung factorable ba yung polynomial na nasa numerator o kaya naman ay nasa denominator. Kung kaya, get their factors. Kung hindi naman, iwan na lang natin as is. Then after this, for our step number 2, we will be equating yung denominator ng ating rational function to 0. Ibig sabihin, kukunin natin si denominator tapos equals 0. Then lastly, we have to solve for the value or values of x para makuha natin yung ating vertical asymptote. Para mas makita natin kung paano siya gawin, let us have some examples. For our first one, we have f of x is equal to 5 over x minus 3. According dun sa steps na pinag-usapan natin kanina, tignan muna natin kung factorable yung ating numerator o kaya naman yung ating denominator. Pero kung titignan natin, isang term lang siya, 5, this is not factorable and then Simple lang din yung nasa denominator natin, kaya we will skip through our step 1. Then ang step 2, sabi daw ay kukunin natin yung denominator, x minus 3, and then i-equate natin siya to 0. Kaya susulat natin, our denominator is x minus 3, and then equate to 0. And then for our last step, we have to solve for the value or values of x. Kailangan yung x lang yung matitira sa isang side ng ating equation, kaya yung ating negative 3, ililipat ko siya sa kabila. From negative 3, this will become positive, kaya our x is equal to 3. This is our vertical asymptote. And then, kung gusto nyo rin kunin yung ating horizontal asymptote, titignan natin yung degree ng ating numerator at denominator. Kung titignan natin yung nandito, since walang x yung ating 5, ang degree lang niya is just equal to 0. Tapos sa denominator naman, we have our x here. Pwede natin siyang erase to 1. Kaya siya yung pinakamataas, then our degree for our denominator is just equal to 1. Since mas mababa yung degree ng ating numerator 0 compared dun sa ating denominator na 1, then gagamitin natin yung ating case 1 automatic, our horizontal asymptote is just equal to 0. Now we have the asymptotes of our rational function. Now let us do more examples for our number 2. We have our f of x is equal to x plus 1 all over 3x plus 2. Step 1, para makuha natin yung ating vertical asymptote, check muna natin kung kaya siyang i-factor. Kaso yung x plus 1, simple na naman siya. Yung ating 3x plus 2, this is as is. Again, for this one, we can bypass our step 1. For our step 2, tignan ulit natin yung ating denominator na 3x plus 2, then i-equate natin siya to 0. So we have our 3x plus 2, and then equal to 0. We only have to solve for the value of our x here. Kaya kailangan nating tanggalin yung ating 2 and then yung 3 na nandito. Ihiwalay muna natin tong positive 2, ililipat natin siya sa kabilang side ng ating equation. So we have our 3x. Si positive 2 dahil inilipat natin siya, this will become negative 2. And then para matanggal natin yung 3 na nandito, since the operation between 3 and x is multiplication, Para mawala siya, we will be dividing both sides of our equation by 3. Kasi kapag ginawa natin yun, we have our 3 divided by 3, this is just 1. As a note, hindi tayo basta-basta nagka-cancel, we are performing division. 
And then 3 divided by 3 is 1 times x. Kaya ang natitira na lang dito is x. Tapos dito sa ating right side, we have our negative 2 over 3. This is our vertical asymptote. Then if we want to solve for our horizontal asymptote then titignan natin yung degree ng ating numerator. We have our x plus 1. Ito yung pinakamataas na exponent, x raised to 1. Kaya this is with a degree of 1. And then for our denominator, we have our 3x. Tignan ulit natin yung x. Siya yung pinakamataas. This is also raised to 1. Kaya our degree, this is also equal to 1. And then by case 3, dahil pareho, yung degree ng ating numerator at denominator, then to solve for our horizontal asymptote, kukunin lang natin yung coefficient ng leading term natin nung kasama nung pinakamataas na exponent sa ating numerator divided by same sa ating denominator. For our a sub n, yung x dito sa ating numerator, we can write this down as 1x. Then ang coefficient na kukunin natin for our numerator is 1. And then for our denominator, kita na naman natin yung ating coefficient na 3. So we have a sub n is 1. And then a sub d is 3. We have our y is equal to 1 over 3. This is our horizontal asymptote. Then for our last example, we have f of x is equal to x plus 5 over x squared minus 25. For the vertical asymptote, kunin natin yung factors ng numerator at denominator kung meron. Yung ating x plus 5, wala tayong magagawa dyan. Pero for our denominator, we have x squared minus 25. We can factor it out. Kailangan natin dumaan dito kasi kapag ka hindi natin finactor yung ating denominator and then tumalo na tayo sa ating step 2 na kinuha natin yung ating denominator na x squared minus 25 tapos inequate natin siya to 0, ilipat natin si 25, this is x squared is equal to 25 and then para matanggal natin yung ating exponent na 2, kukunin natin yung square root ng both sides ng ating equation. Ginawa natin to kasi yung square root of x squared is just equal to x Tapos, this is equal to, ang square root of 25, meron tayong dalawang values. We have positive and negative 5. Kapag tumalo na agad tayo sa step 2, na meron pa palang factors, yung numerator or denominator ng ating rational function, magiging dalawa yung sagot natin. Pero kasi, kapag dumaan tayo dun sa tamang proseso na kinuha natin yung factors ng ating x squared minus 25, ang x squared minus 25, this is difference of two squares. Pwede natin siyang isulat as, x squared minus 5 squared. At ang factor ng difference of 2 squares ay yung product ng sum and difference ng ating dalawang terms. So, pwede natin siyang isulat as yung ating first term ay x, ang ating pangalawa ay 5. Kaya, this is equal to x plus 5 times x minus 5. This is by applying the concept na ang a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. You can review this on your algebra class. Kaya yung ating x squared minus 5 squared or x squared minus 25, this is equal to x plus 5 times x minus 5. Ito yung ipapalit natin dito. Now, nakuha na natin yung factors ng ating denominator. So, this is just equal to x plus 5 x minus 5. Extend natin yung ating fraction line. Then, ito yung pinagkaiba. Pwede nating i-divide yung ating numerator na x plus 5 dito sa x plus 5 sa ating denominator. Kasi the operation between our terms sa denominator is multiplication. Kaya x plus 5 divided by x plus 5, this is just equal to 1. Kaya yung function natin, 1 na lang yung ating numerator, tapos ang natira sa ating denominator ay x minus 5. This is our function. Now that we are done dun sa ating step 1, kapag tumuloy tayo sa ating step 2, na equate natin yung ating denominator to 0, kaya ito ay magiging x minus 5 is equal to 0. Then solving for the value of our x, we have x is equal to positive 5 as we transfer yung negative 5 sa kabilang side ng ating equation, kaya ito ay naging positive. So we have our vertical asymptote. Ito yung magiging consequence kapag nag-skip through tayo na ating step 1. Kasi kung makikita natin, yung x natin, isa lang yung value. 5 lang. Pero kapag hindi natin kinuha yung factors ng ating denominator, magkakaroon tayo ng dalawang sagot. Kaya kailangan muna natin kunin yung factors. Baka kaya pa natin masimplify yung ating rational function. Then lastly, kung gusto natin kunin yung ating horizontal asymptote, 
yung ating numerator is just 1, wala siyang x, kaya ang degree nito is just 0, and then sa denominator x minus 5, x na yung pinakamataas natin sa ating polynomial, and this is just traced to 1, kaya ang degree natin ay 1, since yung degree ng ating numerator, 0, is less than dun sa degree ng ating denominator na 1, then this is case 1, automatically, our horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 0. Now, we were able to compute for the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of our rational function.